Today we have an A123 Systems battery. This is an automotive grade lithium iron phosphate variant called nanophosphate. This is an 8S configuration with pouch cells. And what I want to do today is use this as an expansion battery for the Titan solar generator. And this will actually have double the life cycle count of a Titan battery for half the price. So it should be a pretty fun little build. And these batteries are $649 and they're brand new, but there's a limited quantity. So this video will only be relevant for a couple months until these sell out. And before we build this battery, let's talk about the cell configuration and the terminals. So we have a main negative terminal right here, and then we have some mounting holes right here. And then on this side of the battery, we have the main positive and more mounting holes. And inside we have pouch cells. These are 20 amp hour cells in packs of five in parallel. And then we have an 8S configuration battery. And this pack can be opened by removing these screws with a T15 Torx head screwdriver. And on the label, it shows that it's a 98 amp hour battery, 2.59 kilowatt hours, and the rate of voltage is 26.4, but this will work with 24 volt equipment. This is just the nominal voltage and lithium iron phosphate runs a little bit high compared to other chemistries for 24 volt nominal. And over here, it says that the max charge current is 125 amps and the max charge voltage is 28.8, which comes out to 3.6 volts per cell, and most BMS cutoff voltages are 3.65. So make sure that you set your absorption for 3.6 volts per cell at 28.8. And these are the cell connections for the pouch cells. So we have one, two, three, four, five, 20 amp hour pouch cells in packs in parallel, and then connected in series for that 24 volts. You can also see that we have a main negative terminal over here and a main positive. We also have a temperature sensor right here and right here on opposing ends of the battery so it can have an accurate measurement of the temperature of the cells. And we also have balance lead connections to each bus bar and this is where we want to connect our BMS. And this is how I connected the balance lead. It was very easy to solder on, and then I plugged it into the BMS, which is connected at B negative to the main negative terminal. And this connection was very easy. It took me only a few minutes to solder up this whole balance cable. And this BMS is connected to this pack with some double-sided tape. So this whole project took me about 20 minutes to construct. And so let's test it out by charging it. And the max absorption is 28.8 volts. We have the negative at P negative, and we're gonna connect the positive to the main positive terminal up here. And right now we're charging at 10 amps. So this system is actually working. Now the next step is connecting this battery module to the Titan solar generator. And the Titan is designed to work with 24 volt lithium iron phosphate batteries or in an 8S configuration. So all we need to do is connect the blue to the P negative of the BMS and the brown to the main positive of the battery. And then just plug this into the Titan and we'll have 2.45 kilowatt hours of expansion power. So it's super simple. Now we're gonna use some capped on tape because I just hate how these bus bars are just so unsafe. Look at this. If I drop a tool on here, it's gonna spark pretty big. Now there's less possibility of these balance leads shorting on these bus bars. So it doesn't fit properly, but I'm just gonna secure it down with capped on tape because the moment this is in the solar shed and I drop a tool on it, I'm in big trouble. So I'm just gonna protect this as much as possible. Before we go out to the solar shed, let's make sure that our voltage is correct. And we have 26.5 volts, so we're good to go. So the battery is in the shed and all we need to do is connect it to the expansion port. And the expansion cable will not reach, so I need to move stuff around. So I almost destroyed the Titan right now. I checked one last time to make sure the polarity was correct, and it was incorrect. I must have been tired when I wired this up. So yeah, we're going to switch these two wires and then try to fire it up. Now it's wired correctly so we can plug it into the Titan. And it did not catch on fire, so let's see how much current's going through. Oh, it's hot. It's really hot. We have 70 amps going through. Uh-oh. So the voltage differential between those two connection points is pretty extreme. I'm surprised the BMS did not trip the its OCPD protection. Yeah, this thing is super hot. It would probably melt if I kept running it at that current. I thought that this battery expansion connection was regulated, but I guess it's not. Previously, I could never get it over 15 amps. 
Let's turn off the inverter and the converter and then plug it in and see what happens. Yeah, we still have 70 amps. Oh, it's dropped to 69, 68, 67. So what I need to do is wait for this to charge up all the way and then connect these together. This is at a high state of charge. Technically, this connector can handle it, but these wires, I'm using it from the charger and it's not designed for this current. Also, the BMS is maxed out at 60 amps. If I had a 100 amp BMS or two of these 60 amps in parallel, then I could run this with larger wires. But if I were to increase the wire size, that, that wouldn't be very smart. So I'm actually gonna charge this up and see if there's any difference tomorrow. So I've been charging this battery for a few hours and it's at 42% state of charge. And guess what? Only 26 amps is going from this battery into the Titan. So it's actually working properly. If I had a larger BMS and conductors, I actually tried to make another plug, but I ran out of these Anderson connectors or else I would do that. But yeah, I couldn't handle that full 75 amps with 12 gauge conductors. But yeah, now it's actually working. Um, I'm gonna cycle this a few times and make sure that it actually works. And these batteries are really nice. They're high quality brand new batteries, but they're more for DIY types. Even though it only takes 20 minutes to solder those connections, I know some people are gonna be intimidated and scared compared to the plug and play options available. But if you want something that lasts twice as long as a Titan battery for 50% less money and it's brand new and you wanna slap you know, a $50 BMS or even a $100 BMS, this is a good way to go. Also, Overkill Solar has an 8S BMS now. So if you combine that with this, it's like 120 amp continuous. You could run these all day long and have a complete solar power system so yeah that might be a smart idea for some of you guys anyways the time right now is 1 a.m so i'm gonna go to bed thank you so much for watching and i will talk to you next time bye